Welcome to Economics Week 3 video. In this video, uh, as stated earlier, you can expect it on a weekly basis and you can find it on the Sunday page of your Beyond Classroom or BC platform. So in these videos, we take a look at the week ahead, we preview it, and we put you in kind of inside the picture of what you can expect for the coming week in terms of the material, in terms of what assignments you might expect, so on and so forth. So I hope the first couple of weeks were enriching and fulfilling academically. I hope you're starting to get more into the zone, more into the rhythm of how of, uh, of academics and with school policy, as well as getting more accustomed to your new teachers and your new peers and your former peers as well. So let's begin. So we have three key questions that we talk about in economics. This is how we're going to start off the week. We will ask the three basic economics, economic questions that all societies must answer. These questions are as follows. What will be produced? How will it be, be produced? And how will the output society produces be distributed? So these are three different aspects, three different questions. Each requires contemplation, exploration, and, and analysis as we move forward. We'll be discussing them thoroughly. We want to look at also some current events that we want to integrate into the course at this point to look at some key companies in the world, look at some governments and how they approach those questions. Because the, these questions are essential for a market enterprise to work. So further on, we will describe the economic goals that determine how a society answers the three economic questions. So before knowing what we want to produce, we want to know what our goals are, right? As individuals and as a society. So what are the three economic goals that we want to attain? We want economic security and predictability. That means stable income, repeat customers, uh, safety nets in our countries. We require those elements because they are the building blocks of a civic and functional society that goes on through ups and downs, but nonetheless, over a long period of time, prospers and grows. We will be discussing economic freedom. This touches on entrepreneurship, which we discussed in Unit 1. And economic entrepreneurship is a necessity. It is a fourth factor of production in academics today. Uh, when you're off to college, you will find out that as a little more time progresses, that entrepreneurship is one extra aspect to production. Uh, if you can remember the three aspects of productions, those were labor, land, and capital. Now entrepreneurship is added to that list as well. We will also be discussing economic growth and innovation. So the three uh, economic questions are fully integrated and in unison with two achievable goals, growth and innovation. Innovation, of course, is the daughter of scarcity. It is the offspring of scarcity. And it, is, and it is a driver and a catalyst for economic growth. Moving on, we will be talking about the characteristics of a traditional economy. As we know, in the humanities, nothing is in isolation. The, um, we have traditional uh, legacy, if you want. We, have, we inherit legacies from past generations, from past uh, neighboring nations, from past societies and cultures. And that shapes our economic situation and economic picture throughout the years. So we will be talking about traditional economies who um, stick to traditional way of producing goods. There's a huge focus on agriculture here. They're slow to adapt to change. You might be familiar with the adage, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So that is the type of mentality that is going on. Of course, all of this in the traditional economies, it has a lot of advantages as well as disadvantages. But let's just first start by this, uh, refining the concepts and bringing them and making them clearer. So uh, traditional economies are usually less technological and they value traditions over economic growth. Of course, we don't want to paint a picture that puts these, that makes these sound like um, truths 
nonetheless, there is some validity to these points in traditional economics. So finally, this week, we will be looking at the advantages of a free market economies. Market economies have limited government intervention, allowing private ownership to determine all business decisions concerning how a business is run. So what this means is that the populace has a, more, has a major role in everyday business and in an everyday economy. We know that centrally planned economies have a few key players who determine the output for the rest of the nation. However, in free market economies, the populace is engaged. So this type of economy, the advantages of it, a free market economy, is greater efficiency, productivity, and innovation. We will be delving in further into these subjects this week. And uh, if, uh, if you have any questions uh, about the preview, please bring it to me first thing Sunday so I can clarify further. Thank you.